What's going on guys? Jesse Rush from Zinga Bows here to talk to you. Uh, I'm going to do a build along uh, with a vine maple stave. Um, okay, now this is part one. Now, earlier along with the U that I received, I showed you the bark on the vine maple. Since then, I have set it up in my shaving horse and removed all the bark and some of the pith. I'm going to explain to you about that. Piff is that stuff. See, it's kind of a darker color. It really doesn't hurt to be on there, but that's not the growth ring that you're exposing. The growth ring is actually behind that. Here, I just add a little oil whenever I mess with the wood. It just keeps it better. But anyway... So I removed the bark, careful not to violate the growth rings anywhere. Um, let me see if I can get you out here into the, uh, out here into the uh, sunlight so you can see it a little better. And there it is. Removed. Anyway, let's hop back up here. And I will go over, hold on one second, people. And I will go over with you the uh, rest of the process I got going on here. Okay, so. Here we have a vine maple stave. What I have worked out is simply like this. We got six inches for the handle area. This is the exact center. Got six inches from the handle area. Then I measure out eight inches, and that becomes the start of the fades. The fades go to, go to the end of the stick, the stave. These are the fades. It basically goes from being two, I believe it was two and a half, two and a quarter, so whatever it was. And I get it down to three quarters of an inch on the end. Let me make sure, because I guess i got to know. I know, I've already measured it, but it is two and a half inches wide. And I, get, I go down to three quarters of an inch at the end. Now the last four inches are stagnant. And the reason I write that, stagnant, on there, is because even though it kind of still fades, I'm actually going to stop, I'm going to make it go to three quarters of an inch right here. This is just for the rough. And then this last four inches is going to be three quarters of an inch and it's going to remain about that thick. It's not going to get down thin like the rest of this is. It's going to hop back up here. So on the side here is going to actually be a fade like that. It's going to get real skinny. Here, hang on one second. I'll fix this line up so you can see. I've got a line drawn. Again, just a... Uh, just a rough, quick line. It doesn't actually mean that's where I'm going. But, okay, so there's a line, you know. This will be the actual bow down here. The bottom, this will all be wood that's removed. There's the line, and then boom, it's going to fade back up, and the end of the bow will actually be stiff like that. And that's called a stagnant limb. That helps with hand shock, makes your bow shoot faster. And it's a really good idea to do. Now, at the 8-inch point, okay, your eight inch point from the handle. So you got a six inch handle, and then you got eight inches, and then the fade this way. But there's also another fade. Not only is there this side fade on the end to the stagnant limb, but at the six inch handle point, okay, right here, there are fades. That's where, you know, that's the handle fading down to the limbs. Again, they're not precise, it's just a rough out. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the vine maple stave. I just got it like an hour ago. All I've done so far is debark it and get a good idea on uh, what kind of bow I'm going to make out of it. I'm going to make a flat bow, and I've drawn ideas from several people. Mike from Boyer Bows is a, a buddy of mine, and um, I'm, I've been, uh, you know, he's a good boyer, and um, bowyer, and he's, uh, I'm taking some 
of his advice, basically. He does the Borier bow, which is like got a longer stagnant area. It's almost Malgabet style. But uh, I'm, I'm doing a little different. This area right here is going to be working, but it's going to be non-faded. It's going to stay two and a half inches. This is the handle. This will be the limb, two and a half inches. And then right out here, eight inches down, it's going to fade down to here where it'll go to three quarters of an inch. And then this will be stagnant. This will be working, doing most of the work. And then some of this area will actually bend a little bit too. It'll be stiff in the handle, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that's just how I like to build my bows. Um, I actually used to not do the stagnant tips, and two people, Mike from Boyer Bows does his with a little bit longer stagnant tip, and uh, it's built a little differently, but, <clears throat> and uh, Billy Berger does this shorter stagnant tip, <clears throat> but again, his is a little bit longer too. Uh, I'm making mine slightly shorter, but um, again, it's just a different design, but uh, so I guess that's it. Um, I'm going to get this sucker into the shaving horse with the draw knife and uh, either either use the draw knife to get down to these lines where I want everything or you know maybe I'll use a, a uh, hatchet I'm not really sure yet and with the handle <clears throat> I'm actually gonna eventually it's gonna go like this it's gonna it's gonna swoop in I don't know if you can see that it's gonna kinda do that and then Basically, the way I choose which limb is the top and bottom usually is at the end of the tillering process, whichever limb bends a little more than the other is the one that I make the top. However, this vine maple stave is not straight. See how it curves to the left? We'll put it next to a straight board or a straight uh, beam, and maybe you can tell a little better. See how it curves? The sun is probably, I don't know if it's blinding you guys, it's blinding me, but basically, get out here real quick. Sorry guys, I had to plug my camera in. But there's the vine maple stave. Anyway, it curves to the left. It's like a, like a left-handed smiley face or something. So, you can almost see it from right here. Let me, uh, really just trying to show you how it curves. Anyway, so ideally, okay, because I'm a right-handed shooter and I hold the bow with my left hand and put the arrow on this the side that my fingers pointing to um, ideally I would want this side to be the left or to be the top so that my string will actually run um, center shot um, I am going to heat this bow uh, I don't know how vine maple takes the heat but I am going to heat this and uh, try to straighten that out but you can see down it you see Oh, it's curved. So I'm going to shoot to make this the top limb because if I don't, the string's going to be on the opposite side of the handle. It's not going to work out for me. It'll end up being a left-handed bow and I have to sell it to a left-handed shooter. And I don't have a vine maple bow. So, or a U-bow. <laughs> I got two U-staves here. This one may be for sale. This is a, was supposed to be a practice U-stave, but it actually came very, very good quality. So... This one will be for sale uh, when I can finish it. Um, depending on what kind of bow it ends up, I'm shooting for an English longbow, like target bow style, 35, 40 pounds. We'll see. Um, you know, bows. <laughs> Mike from Bow Your Bows was uh, talking about this the other day, and uh, I, I'd like to make a comment on it. Bows sometimes turn into. A different bow than you started off to be. You just got to kind of build the bow into what it's going to be. I wanted to touch on that and then here's another thing. Here's what's left of my bow from the build, -a build along of the $10 build along bow. So a broken piece. The Mulgabet style bow that uh, Mike from Boyer Bows did. And I just want to say that he, it's not his fault that it's broke at all. It's not my fault. Well it kind of is. What happened was is I tailored it to 26 inches. My neighbor from across the street shoots compound bows. He thought it was cool. He came over. He wanted to shoot it. It was my first bow I ever made. Yeah, go ahead. Well, the dude had a 31 inch draw versus my 26 inch draw. He pulled it back real far and away. I tried to fix it with sinew. 
uh, didn't really work. I was shooting it one day and it exploded in my hands. That's red oak for you though. Kiln dried red oak is dangerous to use anyway. Sometimes you get a good bow, sometimes you don't. Anyway, just wanted to touch on that. But uh, I will be doing a complete build along with this. I'm not going to you know, have the camera set up during all of my work. If I find something that's worth showing you guys uh, while I'm working, I will have the camera set up or have my daughter or somebody run the camera for me. And I will show you what I'm talking about as I go. But basically, I'm just going to do some work, show you what I've done, tell you how I did it, do some more work, show you what I've done, tell you how I did it. Because um, it would take, you know four weeks of footage to do a complete, complete, complete build along. But I am going to do a complete build along with a vine maple stave, which by the way is a very pretty piece of wood. And I'm going to do a complete build along on this big bad boy, my U stave. I have two of them. I may do, if I end up doing a flat bow out of this for some reason, because of this knot, if something happens where I end up changing the design of this other U stave, then I may do a build on on both of those. One English longbow, one North American longbow, or a flat bow. Anyway, this is Jesse Rush from Flinga Bows. Take it easy. Oh yeah, look for part two, Vine Maple. Peace.